So communication is obviously a two-way street here. It's not just talking, talking, talking. We ask God. And see, even tied in with asking God and praying for things, it's, oh, but we know he's going to listen to us. He knows he's going to give us what we're asking because we're keeping his commandments. Relate this to your physical child. Relate that to yourself. When you have a child that's being completely disobedient and doesn't listen to what you're telling them to do, and then they keep asking you for stuff, how likely are you as a father or as a mother going to give that child what they want? You say, son, I want you to clean your room. Son, you need to do this. Son, you got to do this. Son, you got to, you know, and they don't do any of it. And then they're going, oh, well, I, I want you to give me this and I want you. It doesn't work that way. And, and it's, you see, this is a no-brainer when we're thinking about humanly. Right? You're thinking about your kids, you're like, yeah, right. You're going you're gonna to laugh when your child comes to you and goes, well, well can we just have ice cream instead of, you know, like, no. No. Even things that, that are not, like, bad for them, just, just they're asking you for things. Hey, can we go to the park? Well, did you do your school? Did you clean your room? Did you, you know, no. I told you to do all those things, and now you expect me to bless you and, and, and for you to have fun and all this joy? No. You didn't listen to me. You didn't respect me. You didn't do... See, we need to be able to, if we're going to go to God, which we should be going to God, we want to have the confidence to receive the things that we ask of Him because we know, hey, we're listening to you. See, why should God listen to us if we're not listening to Him? A good relationship is going to have good communication, but it's not just a one-directional communication. It's not just we stop our ears and open up our mouth and just start talking to God. Because then you're just talking at him. <laughs> if, you want, if you want God to hear your petitions and your requests and actually do something for you, we need to start by listening. That's the first place to start. The reason why I didn't start there is because it fit in better with my sermon to start in 1 John chapter 3. So otherwise, <laughs> otherwise I would have started with the listening. You're in Deuteronomy 28. Look at verse number 1. The Bible reads, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently. And, and hearken, look at that, those first four words, hear. You're hearkening. You're listening. That's what that word means. If you shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So he's saying, you're going to be blessed. And obviously he's talking to the nation of Israel here, but the principle still stands. Okay, whether he's talking to his people of the children of Israel, we're talking to his people, born again believers of God. The principles still stand. If you're going to hearken diligently, if you're going to make sure and make an effort to listen to the voice of the Lord your God and read his words, because this is where you're going to find his voice. It's in the word of God. They're God's words. If we will listen, if we will ta be, take diligent heed to hearkening unto God, all these blessings are going to come on thee. You will be blessed. Then when you go to him and ask for things, he sees, hey, you've been listening to me. Hey, my son has been listening and doing what I'm telling him to do. That makes me happy. That's a good, you know, that's going to make your relationship, it puts you in good standing with the father because you're listening to him. You're doing what he says. You're having respect to his commandments and to his word. He's going to go, okay, great. You're pleasing me, so I'm going to please you. I will give you things when you come to me and ask for stuff. Yeah, I'm not going to withhold from you. Now, obviously, whether you're good or bad, God still provides your basic needs and necessities. God still gives you the breath that you breathe. And God does that on the just and on the unjust. But he goes further and blesses us beyond even those basic things when we listen to him and we have our communication open. What's another sign of having a good relationship is love. We're in Deuteronomy 28. Flip back to chapter number 6. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this point, but it's still important nonetheless. So think about your own communication with God. Are you listening? Do you, do you 
Do you have ears to hear? Do you just read the Bible and let it go in one ear and out the other and not really hear? That would be the same thing as, as you know, my child standing there in front of me and not moving and, and listening to what I'm saying. But if they don't retain anything and it just goes in one ear and out the other, what's, like, what value is it for them to just be standing there at that point? What value is it if you're just reading the Bible just to read and your eyes are going over the words, but you're not really, you're not really taking the message to heart? It's just, I could repeat the words. You have to be able to take it to heart. That's what hearing really is. That's why Jesus said, you know, they have ears, but they can't hear. Because he knows the, 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 odd, the, the, the sound waves from the vocal cords. You know, physically, they can hear it. Their brain can process that there's words being spoken and that there's a sentence and they can have some real small level of understanding just what a sentence is and what it means. But they're not really hearing. They're not really receiving what's being said. You need to make sure that when you're reading from God's word, when you're hearing and listening to the voice of God, that you're actually taking it in. And, and taking it seriously and not just reading just to, to check off a, a box that said, I read, but actually reading to, to hear, to listen to God. That is extremely important. And then, of course, talk um, and ask God to help you with all your needs. 